Well, it's a pleasure to be with you here this evening, and I'm in my office at the Faith Baptist Church in Canton, Michigan, and it's kind of quiet right now around here, very quiet, but I'm reminded that God is speaking. He speaks to us through His Spirit, and He's speaking to us through His Word this evening. Well, let's see what God has to say to us in 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll look at a few verses here beginning in 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Here Peter says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Well, God has his way of humbling each of us. Uh, if anything in this whole coronavirus is going to be a positive, it would be that at least we realize that we are insufficient, that we have uh, many areas in our lives that we can't work out ourselves. We are very vulnerable. Uh, I here this last week I've been really frustrated. I've been at home and I uh, have to get out every once in a while and just get in the car and come up to the church or whatever. And then this week I've been video videotaping a lot of my sermons and devotions at home and having to edit them and get them back up online. It's just been very hard. Little glitches here and there and this problem. I've been working on it for hours, staying up late every night. And, and I get so tense and I get so upset because I can't work it out. Well, we have to realize that we're not the one that's in control. And so it hit me today that I have to kind of just, I got I to gotta quit being so upset because I don't have control. God does. Notice what Peter says, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves, how? Under the mighty hand of God. You know, when I can't work it out, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll do the best I can, but God is, is the one who can work all things according to his uh, uh, glory, uh, to work things out for his plan. And so I have to realize that. Today I had to just say, God, I can't make this work. It's not working out. So, Lord, I'm just going to give it to you. And then guess what? It worked. <laughs> oh boy, all the frustrations. I'm try I'm one of those people that like to work it out myself to make it happen. And Peter says, hey, you can't do that. You can't do that. You have to humble yourself. You have to get underneath God. Let him be on the throne. Realize that God is the one who has the mighty hand. He is the one that's able to work our problems out when we cannot. And so if anything that's can happen that's good during this time of uh, trials and the whole nation, uh, you know, in, in having difficulty, it's that we can realize that when we can't do it, God can. And it's my prayer that a lot of people come to God, that they'll humble themselves and realize that they can't work things out, but God can. We are reminded here that we must humble ourselves and pray. Um, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God says, then I'll come and I'll heal your land and I'll forgive your sin. The great preacher Spurgeon said that, our, that self is the problem many times. He said, if death is the last enemy to be destroyed, he said, well, surely pride is the second to the last. So the apostle Peter, he mentions three things that stand in our way of being really godly, uh, uplifting people, good Christians. Three things that, that trip us up. The first one is self. Yes, it is true that many times we are our own worst enemy. Peter would stick his foot in his mouth all the time, and he would just spout out things without even thinking about it, and and Jesus would have to correct him, get him back on track many times. That's the same way with you and me. We, we, don't, we are our own enemy. And so Peter realized that. Humility is a godly virtue that each one of us needs. Jesus humbled himself and became obedient, even to the death of the cross. So when it says humble yourselves, this is not an option. This is a command, this is an imperative that we must humble ourselves that God would exalt us and lift us up in his time, in due time. Pride goeth before destruction 
and a haughty spirit before a fall. Well, if pride goes before destruction, God help us not to self-destruct. Well, Peter faced a problem here with self, but he also he faced the problem of Satan. Satan is a real personage. The devil is a spiritual opponent that comes against you and me. He came against Peter. On one occasion, Jesus told Peter, he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Look with me at Luke chapter 22 and verses 31 and 32. Partway through the verses, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I like the next part, this next verse. Verse 32 says, But I have prayed for thee. Prayed what? That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So Jesus said, Satan wants to sift you. Now, the only kind of sifting I really know about is maybe in the past I've made some brownies or baked a cake and if I'm doing something from scratch I put the flour in the little sifter and shake it a little bit and make the thing go back and forth and you sift your flour into the bowl well that's not really what Peter's talking about he was a sift wheat they would throw it up in there I mean it was a violent I mean they had to shake it and shake it and shake it to get all the refuse out and and what Satan wants to do is sift us so that there's nothing left that we're totally unusable to God and so he wants to shake our lives up. He wants to tear our lives apart. And, uh, you know, we can't let him do that. It's important that we remain strong in our faith. Just as Jesus prayed for Peter, that your faith would not fail you. And so I'm, let me speak to us today, this evening. Be careful during this time when we are very vulnerable that we do not allow our faith to suffer. That, we, that our faith is even more stronger now than ever. In fact, Peter talks about that in chapter 1, how the trial and trying of our faith worketh patience, and it helps to mature us, that we can be strong in the Lord and in his power. Look with me in verse 7. A very, very powerful, very, very important verse. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting. Not just one time, but over and over, casting all your care upon him, Jesus, for he careth for you. An awesome verse. We are to throw all of our cares, every disappointment, every discouragement, every despair, every painful experience, every fiery trial, every suffering that we have, every heartache, we must Take those and cast them upon him, the Lord. The word care here means to be anxious, to have anxiety. In fact, the original Greek word means to have a divided mind. So what can happen so easily, even during times like these, our minds get, get divided and we forget to focus on God. We get to focus on all the, all the problems that are, that, that they, those are what cares are, anxieties, stressful thoughts in our minds. And we, instead of thinking about the good things, we think about all the bad things. And Peter understood what, it, what uh, the word care meant to be divided in your mind. You remember the story when Jesus called Peter to walk upon the water to get out of the boat and to he bid him to come to him and at first Peter was doing pretty well until he got divided in his thinking and he began to look around and see the waves and the boisterous winds and then he began to sink God help us not to sink during this difficult time of trials that we're going through right now help our faith to be strong God help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might to be focused on God this is our biblical counsel this evening to do this, to shift our worries, our anxieties over from us to God. When we can't handle it, we must remember what verse 6 has already said. God can. He has a mighty hand. He's able to handle anything that comes our way. And so God help us to learn these principles. Rest assured that if you cast all your care upon God, something good will always happen. 
Now, Peter understood as a fisherman what it meant to cast a net out. Sometimes he would catch a lot. Sometimes he'd bring his net back and catch nothing. But let me tell you, if you'll cast your cares, the net of all of your cares and problems and worries and frustrations over onto Jesus, something will always happen positive, and God will take care of you. God's going to help us to keep keeping on. When our hands are so weak from the burdens that we face, we must remember that God will help to bear that load. Look with me in verses 8 and 9. And then he, he concentrates on Satan some more here. He says, self is a problem, but then Satan. Look at verses 8 and 9. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, a roar, roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let me read that again. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Notice what Peter says. That's the case, but notice verse 9. Here's the positive. Here's the defense. Whom, whom, the devil, Satan, whom resist. How do we do that? Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Peter says, you're not alone. There are other people going through problems and sufferings just like you are. And everybody in the world today is probably going through some, some kind of a repercussion of this virus. We're all going through different times. We're all being isolated. We're all having problems. And Peter says, you have trials. Everybody, everyone does. It says here, but you need to be cautious, be watchful, be on high alert. Uh, on the news just um, either today or yesterday, they were talking about how this was such a volatile situation in the United States that, that there are uh, enemies, the terrorists are plotting ways that they can attack us even right now. And so our government, the FBI, they're looking out and trying to be careful to protect us. But Peter says, you need to be on high alert because you have an enemy, Satan, who is a powerful enemy. And you need to be careful. You need to be vigilant. Be awake. Be alert. Be steadfast. Well, he says he's like a, a roaring lion. Well, how do roaring lions walk about? How do they seek whom they want to tear apart and devour? Well, they get on the prowl. And if there's a herd of wildebeests out there in the wild, a lion will scan. He'll scan the herd. He'll find the weakest one. And then he begins to sneak up quietly, gently. He'll move towards that weakest point of the herd. And then he'll take off. And he'll, he'll jump on top of that wildebeest. And many times they'll try to attack the neck and cut off the, the airflow from the windpipe. And then they'll just rip that uh, prey apart. So we must be very careful. Satan wants to do that to you and me too. Lions are selective. And they are seductive in their attacks. They plan and then they pounce. And they have decisive power. Now, Satan's our enemy. He's our adversary. He is against us. But he doesn't have all power. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. But they are excellent hunters. Satan is too. He knows how to seek out whom he wants to devour. Lions are predators. They have long canine teeth. They have huge, sharp claws. They have a powerful stride and amazing agility, as well as a keen sense of hearing. And so they are a formidable enemy. And Peter says Satan's the same way. You need better watch out because they want to tear you apart. So we are very vulnerable, vulnerable right now. Many of us are having doubts and fears and frustrations. We better be careful. Because Satan wants to take opportunity to take us down and to tear us apart. Here, Peter says you need to resist the devil. Stand up against the devil. But how do you do it? Whom resists steadfast in the faith. One verse 
verse 7, that God put in exactly the right place. He put it between verses 6, ourself, and verse 8 and 9, Satan. And so Jesus is in between. He's there for us to cast our cares upon because we know that he cares for us. God is able to sustain you and me during this difficult time. He's able to keep us going, knowing that we are not alone in the world. There are other people suffering all around the world. Let's be reminded that Jesus is here with us this evening, just waiting. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. Waiting for what? Waiting for us to cast, to transfer our cares, our burdens, our problems upon him. Well, how can we do that? Well, it reminds me of the old song several years ago. It says, give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, and broken toys. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus and he will turn your sorrows into joy will you do that right now are you willing to do that right now look at verse 10 it says but the God of grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while make you perfect establish, strengthen, settle you. God is not only to help us with ourself and to help us with Satan, but he's able to help us through our suffering. Know that we can go through these difficult issues, whatever they may be in your life, and that you can come out on the other end better. God wants to mature us. He wants to perfect us, to make us more like Christ and many times it takes suffering to bring that about. Even this whole ordeal, is, again, as I, I mentioned, the coronavirus. A lot of people are just allowing this state of uh, chaos to weaken them, to unsettle them. And God wants to do just the opposite. He wants to establish us. He wants to strengthen us. And God wants to settle our unsettled minds and hearts. Well, it's all, Peter says, because of the grace of God. It's all because of his grace, his amazing grace, that this is possible. Many that do not know God, they don't have anywhere to turn during this difficult time. But thank God we have a God who is, has sufficient grace. Let me reemphasize this evening that we have a God who cares. Peter says, cast your care upon him for he cares for you. Say, does God care about me? Yes, he does. You may not understand. You may not think he does, but he cares and loves you and me this evening. He understands. See, it's hard to care for someone if you don't understand what they're going through. But God understands. He knows what you're going through right this very moment better than you do. Our previous pastor of Faith Baptist for 53 years. Pastor Gregory went home to be with the Lord just a couple of years ago. And I was I had an opportunity to work on staff with him, and he was kind of like my mentor in many ways. And his favorite song of all was, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. I know he would say that to you and me right now. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. The words... Part of the words say this, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There is no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Problems with self, problems with Satan, and problems with our suffering. We must learn to cast our cares, roll them over upon Jesus because he cares for us. Just open your heart right now. Wrap up all the anxieties, all the frustrations, all the problems, 
all the problems. Gather them all up, every one of them, all your care. Do it right now and cast them upon the Lord. Will you do it? Don't pick them back up tomorrow now. You cast them to, uh, to the Lord, then you recast them tomorrow and you recast them tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But you don't pick them back up. George Mueller, a great man of the past, would often often tell a story about a little boy who was carrying a heavy burden as he was walking down the road. And then there would be a man that came and met him and came alongside with a, a horse-drawn cart and offered the little boy for a ride. You can get in. And so the boy got got in the cart, but yet he had still had the burden that he was carrying on his back. And and the man said, well, why are you still carrying that burden? He says, because I don't want to be a burden on the horse. <laughs> well, we have, we have climbed into the cart of salvation. And we have a God who cares. And God who wants to help carry those burdens for us. He will lighten the load and he'll make a way. Just cast them onto him. Roll them over to Jesus Take your hands off of your trials and cast them onto him. Surrender them one by one. Really, there are two main biblical principles I want to leave us with this evening. The first one is that God is in complete control. And then secondly, God is a God who cares. A great preacher of the past said this, Treat cares as you treat sin. Hand them over to Jesus, one by one by one. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that can be an encouragement to us this evening. Lord, help us to cast our cares and our burdens upon you. Lord, I pray for someone that does not know that they're saved, that is not understanding what it means to be a born-again Christian. I pray that you'll convict their heart of their sin. And Lord, help them that, to realize that they need salvation. Lord, we thank you that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, Lord, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, those in doubt, those in, in difficulties, that they would make sure, first of all, that they know you as their Lord and personal Savior, to accept you, to receive you into their hearts by faith. And then, Lord, all the rest that do know you, Lord, and myself included, God, help us to take all of our worries and our cares. And Lord, help us to cast them on you because we realize that you do care for us. God, help us to do it right now. To do it right now, Lord, and not to wait, not to procrastinate. God, protect us, keep us strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if this has been a blessing to you this evening, I hope it has been, that you'd let us know. In just a few moments, you'll see up on the screen that you're watching the address and the phone number of our church. And may God bless you and help, help you to have a, a good night's sleep tonight and a, a wonderful week uh, starting tomorrow, I pray in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.